Hello everyone, welcome to Screencast ID SC10083. In today's screencast, we are going to be configuring a captive portal wireless LAN in the tunnel mode. Tunnel mode essentially means that it is an extended VLAN. Let's get started. Based on our topology def uh, defined in SC10061, we are going to be creating a wireless LAN. This wireless LAN will be mapped to VLAN 5, which only exists on the RFS controller. Hence, when the AP beacons with uh, this wireless LAN, all the packets for that particular wireless LAN are tunneled back uh, through the Mint tunnel to this RFS controller. When the client associates to this wireless LAN, the captive portal policy forces that uh, client to get redirected to a login page which resides on this particular AP since we are using the uh, internal captive portal policy. Uh, once the client uh, provides its username and password, that username and password is verified across a radius server which resides uh, on the RFS controller. To create our wireless LAN, let's log into our uh, controller using the password as admin symbol. I have uh, loaded the config from SC10042. Uh, let's just uh, go ahead and see what configuration we already have in here. So if you look at the uh, uh, profiles and go to the RFS4000 and let's click on edit. Uh, let's go to interfaces. The Ethernet port uh, on G1 is basically a trunk port as you can see the native VLAN is 1 the native VLAN is not tagged and we're allowing uh, VLANs 1 and 5 now 1 is a management VLAN on which we have an IP address um, VLAN 5 is the guest VLAN on the virtual interfaces as you can see we've given uh, VLAN 1 a static IP address of 192.168.2.100 We've also given a default gateway, so if you go down to network and then go down to static routes, uh, the default gateway has been set to 2.49, which is my wired switch. What we've uh, also created is uh, under the services menu, captive portals, we already have a captive portal, uh, which is uh, defined to be internal, which means device itself. Uh, we also have some uh, radius groups and uh, user pools and server policies. However, these groups and uh, captive portal policies have to get mapped somewhere. Uh, so let's just go to our wireless uh, wireless LANs. As you can see by default, wireless LAN 1 uh, is already been created. Now since this is a 4000, uh, we have wireless LAN 1 in there. If this was to be a 6000 or a 7000, you would not see wireless LAN 1. So let's just edit this uh, existing wireless LAN. I'm going to call it uh, guest hyphen internal. I'm going to enable the wireless LAN and I'm going to map this to VLAN 5. Let's click on OK. The next thing we want to do is enable captive portal on this wireless LAN. So we navigate to security and we choose captive portal. Once we choose that, uh, we can go ahead and uh, select the drop down box and choose internal since that is the captive portal policy we created. Let's click on OK. Let's commit and save our changes. The next thing we need to do is uh, map the captive portal policy to the right device and uh, do the exact same thing for the radius server policy. Uh, as seen in our diagram before, the uh, captive portal policy is on the AP itself. So we're going to go to the profiles, click on our default AP7131 profile, click on edit. We're going to navigate uh, to services and since uh, the AP is going to be hosting the login page and is going to enforce a captive portal policy, we have to ensure that uh, this is checked. Let's click on OK. Let's uh, commit and save our changes. Exit out of here. Our AAA server now runs on the RFS 4000. So we need to make sure that uh, the radius server policy that we created is mapped to the RFS 4000. So we'll highlight 4000. We'll uh, click on Edit. We will go to services. As you can see, it has the captive portal policy there and the radius server policy. However, we don't need to check the uh, captive portal policy because that resides on the AP, not on the switch. Let's uh, choose our radius server policy because the radius server is running on the RFS controller. Let's click OK, exit, commit, and save. The final thing we need to do is map our wireless LAN to the radios. 
So let's go back to our uh, 731, click on edit, uh, navigate to interfaces, go to radios, highlight radio 1 and click on edit. Go to wireless LAN mapping. Wireless LAN 1 is already mapped. Again, this is an RFS 4000 and that's why it's uh, mapped by default. If this was a 6K or a 7K, it would not be mapped by default. The same is true for uh, Radio 2. The final thing uh, before we can uh, try and associate clients uh, and get access uh, to the guest network, we have to make sure that we have the country code set. So let's go to uh, the RF domain. Let's choose the default RF domain and we need to set the country code. Without this, uh, the APs would not beacon. They would get adopted, but they would not beacon. Uh, I'm just going to use uh, Nicaragua. Click on OK. Commit changes and then save them. We have now associated our wireless client uh, to the access point. Let's go ahead and see uh, what IP address we have on our wireless uh, adapter. As you can see, we have an IP address of 192.168.5.207, which kind of tells us that our networking is uh, configured correctly because uh, uh, VLAN 5 uh, is an extended VLAN. It only resides on the controller. So all the packets uh, from the uh, wireless client have been tunneled back to the controller and it does have an IP address. Now let's try and uh, go to google.com and see what happens. As you can see, we got redirected. Uh, the IP address here is uh, 192.168.3.232. This is uh, the IP address of my AP. Since I'm using DHCP, uh, I did not give it a static IP address, uh, but we did get forwarded uh, to the AP itself. That is because the uh, captive portal policies uh, are enforced at the AP, and the AP is uh, configured, or that policy is basically configured to have the login page uh, reside on the AP itself. Let's go ahead and uh, create, uh, I mean, not create, but uh, plug in our username and password, Moto1, Moto1, and click on sign in. We have successfully logged on to the internet uh, using our uh, username and password Moto1 and Moto1, which is uh, basically uh, cross-checked or verified against the radius server running on the controller. In this screencast, we have successfully created a wireless LAN in tunnel mode associated a client to the captive portal, um, authenticated against a radius server running onboard the RFS controller. You should now be able to uh, replicate this setup. Uh, the configuration file for this screencast can be downloaded from the link seen on your screen. Thank you for watching.